Today I'll show you how to make your own exhaust fan flow meter. A lot of people use the one made by Energy Conservatory and uh, it works great, but you can also make your own. Uh, thanks to the DM32 manometer by Retrotech, it allows you to make your own exhaust fan flow meter with any hole size that you want to. Some of you might be familiar with the cardboard box method, which is nice if you're doing testing by yourself on high ceilings because it's lightweight so you can tape it up to the top of the ceiling, climb back down your ladder, and then take your reading. If you're doing testing in front of a client, sometimes it might be better to use something that looks a little bit more professional or you might just be looking for something that is a little more durable and permanent uh, to keep in your toolbox. So we'll go over a list of some of the materials that we're going to use. This is just a plastic file storage box. Uh, I got this from the container store. I chose this because it's a heavier duty plastic and uh, it has a thicker plastic box. So I felt like it would be a little bit more durable to use in the field. I'm going to uh, cut off the top of this so that I have a nice smooth opening and uh, we'll get to that part later. Uh, I'm also going to use some half inch pipe insulation here that we'll use for our seal at the opening of the box. I'm also going to use two range plugs from my blower door off my 5000 model and then I'm also going to use a hose, a retro tech hose connector here. That'll be where I connect my hose to the box. And these two pieces here, they were four inch clean out adapters that you would find in the plumbing aisle at Home Depot. And so I took them and cut the bottoms and the tops of them off. So that would have been the bottom and that would have been the top. And so it did look like that. And so I cut them down to give me a nice flanged opening that I can set in the top of the box and then set my range plug into there. So what I did was I just cut the bottom and the top off with a hacksaw and then smoothed and leveled it off with a bench grinder. And then we'll also use some adhesives to tie everything together at the end. So now I have the top of the box cut off and I also have my holes drilled. I used a four and a half inch hole saw and so that worked perfect to get some nice even uh, holes cut in. And so now my flanged openings can pop right in. Now I have my port installed for my hose to connect to. It actually unscrews uh, right out of the connector itself so you don't have to use the whole thing. So here's our end result, the final product here. Uh, I painted mine and gave it a nice Retrotech red since we are using Retrotech parts on it. So I figured that was fitting. Um, you can see here uh, on my gasket on the bottom here, <clears throat> this is the half inch pipe insulation that has the adhesive edges and it actually stuck onto the box really well. And then I cut at an angle there so I wouldn't have a perpendicular gap there to the edge of my box. So it would have a nice seal all the way around. And you can see that uh, the blower door range plugs fit in there nicely. I put a little bit of foam around the edge of the PVC cutout. That way, once I have my plugs in, I know I have a nice airtight seal when I want to use this as a pressure pan. I also put uh, a handle on it here too. This is actually for uh, doing edging if you're doing interior painting. But uh, if you put Velcro on it, it makes for a really nice handle. And as far as total cost on this, including the handle and the paint that I put on it, I probably spent a total of 50 bucks. And that's not including the cost for the port for the hose to attach to, as well as the range plugs. This is assuming that you already have a Model 5000 or 6000 blower door. Obviously, if you wanted to use something else for your plugs, you could. I would recommend that if you're not gonna go this route, cut a square or rectangular hole that way you have a nice round number that doesn't have a decimal on it like mine does. Um, it just makes it easier to figure and remember the area of your, of your plugs. Uh, you can use rigid foam board or something like that as your plugs to give you a good seal around as you cut your different holes in. But if you are going to use the circular uh, holes like I did, definitely use a hole saw and some kind of a uh, factory cut opening to reinforce the edges. That way you know exactly what your area is of your circle. So this is the ASIN flow finder. This is the most accurate low flow finder you can get on the market right now. It's, uh, it uses its own calibrated fan in here along with its own manometer. 
So what it does is it zeroes out the pressure between whatever type of vent it's reading, whether it's a supply or an exhaust fan like this. So since this is the most accurate measurement tool we have, we'll use this as a control to see how accurate our homemade device is. So we'll put it up to the fan like this. Now we're ready, we just push the button. That little arrow pointing up means that it's feeling an exhaust. So we'll give it just a few seconds. So 42.4, 43, so around 42 and a half or so, that, that's about what we're reading for a flow in this bath van. So next we're going to use the DM32 gauge with the Energy Conservatory exhaust fan flow meter to see how it also compares uh, with our homemade device that we're going to measure next. So to make things a little bit easier to see, I've got my gauge hooked up to gauge remote to this iPad. And so just to show you the settings, we just click on our picture here. We'll go to change device. We'll scroll down until we see the TEC devices. There's our exhaust box. We'll select that. We're going to do the E2 setting. And now we're ready to test. So we're on the E2 setting. It's looking like it's hovering right around 40, 40 CFM. At about three, negative three and a half pascals to four pascals of pressure. So we're in a good range there. So it's looking around 40 CFM would be uh, the number we would record there. So as we're hooked up to our gauge here, notice that I'm hooked into both channels. That way it'll give me not only the CFM, but the pressure as well. The reason that we want to see the pressure is because once we go over 8 pascals, like on this chart here, this device is no longer accurate. Same for, for this TEC box and the same for any homemade one you're going to make. You want to see your pressure so that you can make sure you're within that proper range that is under 8 pascals. So to hook my gauge up to my homemade box here, I'll go into my settings uh, to click on the picture to change the device. And so I'll cycle through and I'll choose this whole flow option. And so my area that I need to type in for this hole that's opened up here on my device, I have it marked here where it says 14.19. And so I will enter that in like so. And hit set. And now I'm ready to test. So now we'll try our homemade rig here and see how it performs. Uh, I'm going to test it with just one of these holes open. Uh, this is not a powerful bath van, as you can see. It's only pulling about 40 CFM. So with just one of these rings open, my uh, whole area here is 14.19. And so uh, I have that entered into my gauge here. And so I will put the box up and then put the gauge up to the camera. So with that small hole open, we're at about negative seven pascals, which is under our eight range, so that's good. And it's looking like we're getting a little over 40, about 41. So we're, we're falling in between where the uh, TEC box ranges and where the flow finder ranges. So I would say our design here for uh, this exhaust fan flow meter is pretty good. Another important thing to mention if you're going to use your, your own homemade exhaust fan flow meter is compliance, uh, especially with ResNet 380. Um, obviously, as we've shown today, this is more than likely in compliance as it tests out with just about everything else that we tried with it today. But I realize not everybody else has other accurate equipment where they can go back and check behind themselves. And so if you are using a box like this and your provider wants proof that it is within compliance, it might be hard to prove that. So that's just something to keep in mind. So that concludes our demo for making your own exhaust fan flow meter. Uh, obviously, if you have any questions, if you want to make your own or any of the functions of the DM32 gauge, please reach out to us. Thanks.